some of the properties of logarithms that you'll want to pay attention to is if x, that argument, is greater than 1, then the output of both log base 10 and natural log of x are going to both be a positive number. If x equals 1, in other words, log base 10 of 1 or natural log of 1, we'll see that the output is 0. If the argument or the number you're plugging in, the input is a number between 0 and 1, like a fraction, like a half, or 0.2, then the answers or the output will be a negative number. If the input is less than or equal to 0, in other words, a 0 or a negative number that you plug in, neither logarithm is defined. It's undefined or not real is what they'll say. So let's try it with the you try it first. So if I do log base 10, and then just hit the log button, and then of 6, I see that my number comes up a positive number, 0.778. And let me just write that in. I'm just going to round it. If I do the natural log of 6, I get 1.792. So that's demonstrating if my number that I plug in is greater than 1, we plugged in 6, we come out with a positive value. If I plug in a 1 for x, in other words, find log base 10 of 1, we come up with a 0 for an answer. Same with natural log of 1. It also comes up 0. So both of these... Are zero and that's what that's that's stating there if the input is 1 the output will be 0 if I have an input that's between 0 and 1 like 0.5 watch what happens here with your output your output becomes a negative value negative 0.301 if I do a negative or a natural log of 0.5 I'll also see that I come up a negative output, negative 0.693. If I pick a number less than or equal to 0 as my input value, watch what happens here, log of negative 6, for example. My calculator says non-real, and it won't allow it. I have to quit. And the same for natural log of a negative number. It doesn't matter what it is. Negative 6, negative 8. Any negative value in there as an argument is going to give me a non-real solution out. So, you know, you can say not real or not defined. On both cases. So I want you to graph what the log base 10 of x looks like. We can do that in part with our calculator and look at maybe the, the t-chart here. So I go into y equals and I'm going to set log just x. And so that we're all looking at the same screen, I want to do a zoom and then 6 is standard. Now, it's kind of hard to see this, but let's take a look at the, um, the chart or the table of it. So I'm going to go into Table Set, do Second, Window, and see where it says Independent Variable. My X is, I want to put that on Ask. I want my input so that I can tell it what to put in. Dependent Variable is going to come out automatically, so leave that on Auto. Then I can go into Table, so do Second, and then Graph. And now it's going to allow me to make a chart. So for example, you know, pick negative 3. And it says Error, because when I put in log base 10 of negative 3, we end up with something not real. All right, so let's try a number between 0 and 1, like 0.5 comes up a negative 0 0.301. What about 0 0.7? Negative 0 0.15. Oh, 
So it's coming up a little bit. So at negative, or as uh, x equals a half, it's down here. It's coming up a little bit. At x equals 1, we should know what happens because we already said that's going to come out 0. So it's sitting right there on my x-axis. At x equals 2, it's 0 0.3. So I'm getting some tiny decimals here. So I'm going to jump up a little bit. Instead of doing 2, let's do 8. Now it's almost to 1 at 8. So we're coming up just a little bit. What about at 10? Log base 10 of 10 is 1. So it's kind of taking its time coming up, and then it goes straight down. And remember, I can't plug in 0 or anything less than that, so I can't cross that y-axis there. In fact, there's something called an asymptote that's sitting right here. It's a dashed line that'll prevent me from crossing it with my graph. Okay. Do the same with the natural log function. So go into y equals. Instead of log x, let's do natural log of x. So I'm going to do ln x. Take a look at the graph. It doesn't look a whole lot different than what I have here. So let's take a look at the table now. So I do second table. And again, the values that I have in here now are being plugged into the natural log function. So if I take the natural log of negative 3, it's going to come up error. If I put in natural log of 0.5, I get negative 0.693. So at 0.5, almost down to negative 1, not quite. At 0.7, it's still below the x-axis. At 1, it's at 0. And then it's going to take a while for it to get going, but at 8, notice I jump up to just past the number 2. And at 10, it's at 2.3. So it goes up a little bit quicker. Right, so I connect the dots. And again, it's going to fall and follow the y-axis straight down, get really, really close to it. And again, it's not going to cross it, so we have what's called a vertical asymptote right here. And the vertical asymptote in both cases is the line x equals 0. That's our vertical asymptote. So make a list of features that the graphs have in common. They both have the same vertical asymptote. Squeeze it in there. Same vertical asymptote, x equals 0. They have the same shape. They're both increasing functions. So going from left to right, your finger goes uphill. Uh, what they both have the same x-intercept. That being point one zero. They do not have a y-intercept because of the vertical asymptote sitting on the y-axis. So no y-intercept. Right, and our pictures are primarily on the right-hand side of the y-axis. Nothing going on on the left-hand side here, or where x is less than or equal to 0. We don't have any values coming out for our output of our graph. So those are some features that they have in common. What we're going to do on the next page is move these pictures around and see how that changes our vertical asymptote and our x-intercept.